Miss Ratzlaff, and I am the band teacher at our school. And this video that I have made is a video from a Zoom I did with some grade fives. So please forgive that I'm not looking directly at the camera uh, when I'm teaching some of these concepts and the instruments. So I hope you enjoy and I will add a link at the bottom when I when I post this uh, with my email address as well as a link to a Google form for you to fill out so that I have an idea as to what instruments you are hoping to play next year. None of the information is completely set yet for September and what it's going to look like. So I'm just doing my best that I can to plan ahead so that we are ready for September when it comes. So ideally your first instrument would be the one instrument that you really, really want to play and the other two would be backups. I'm going to be making it a little bit, a lot more flexible this year uh, because of the fact that uh, we won't even be able to get to try the instruments. Um, so in the video, I will have some ideas that you could at least see what it feels like to make the sound and you can go from there. So, uh, I hope you enjoy and I will hopefully hear back from you very soon. Is of the Woodwind family and, uh, this is the flute. The flute, uh, you make the sound. Basically, you can try from home if you have a bottle, uh, like a pop bottle. Um, the smaller top is a little easier to make a sound, but what you would do is you would put it under your lip and blow across. Or, now it's not working. So I'm blowing and aiming my mare across. The same would be on the flute. So we can see there's this head joint and I would put it up to my lips and blow. Now, obviously you don't all have flutes at home, so you can't try that, but the pop bottle would be a good way to see if you like how it feels to make the sound. Uh, flutes are relatively cheap to, cheap, cheapest to rent uh, from stores, but I can talk about that after. Um, right now, I'm just gonna demo the flute for you. melody instruments and uh, what's nice is it does not have any funky reeds or anything like that so you wouldn't have to mess with that. Uh, These are reeds you can see the wooden ones go on the mouthpiece and vibrate and then there are double reeds that vibrate on their own. This is the clarinet and something about the clarinet that you would need to realize and know just to kind of keep an eye is the saxophone and the clarinet both have a uh, single reed that looks like, I'll move this closer to the camera, looks like this. Um, and what it does is it will vibrate against the mouthpiece. And the reed has to be wet. Sorry about that. So it looks kind of funny while I do that. Um, how you would make a sound or what it would feel like with your mouth anyway, is if you give yourself the thumbs up. You can do it with me. You don't have to feel scared. Pretend your nail is the reed. So your bottom, your reed, your thumbnail will sit on your bottom lip, not on the teeth, on your bottom lip. Your top teeth will go on top. You would seal your lips. And then if, hopefully nothing goes out. That's how you would blow and make the sound on your clarinet. So, and the same for the saxophone as well. Like the, the reeds are about the same size. So here is the clarinet. <laughs> Recognize the song? So the clarinet is uh, not a very big uh, instrument. Uh, the flute and clarinet 
course, I don't have these handy. Flute case, nice and small, so can fit in your backpack. Clarinet cases are about this big. This is the clarinet instrument. Again, fits in your backpack. Saxophone case is a bit bigger. I am going to attempt to pick this up. Uh, it's a bit bigger, but will not fit in your backpack. All right. So here is the saxophone. Now the saxophone also has a single reed, as you can see on the mouthpiece. It's a little bigger than the clarinet. So again, you would do the same thing with your thumb to make the sound. One catch about the saxophone before I forget is your hands need to be large enough. This is where recruiting, when you get to try, um, the, the tricky part is to get your hands around these side keys. Okay, see how they stick out. So you have small hands, you might hit these keys and then all you're gonna get is squeaks and squawks because nothing is going through because you're letting air out of the sides where it's not supposed to go. So I measured it to try to see if you would be able to uh, measure your hand. So it from the thumb here to the first finger that I would put my hand on, it needs to measure about five inches is what I measured it at. So I take my little measuring tape that I use for sewing and I would measure from here to here and see if I can pass the five inch mark. I can hit about six, so I know I'm good. Okay, it's give or take around five. If you can't reach that far with your fingers, I would start the first year on clarinet, like, and then it would be fairly easy to change onto saxophone the second year. So just a little FYI, if you're really set on it. This one uses a neck strap, so it kind of hangs from my body. You'll see this in jazz bands, but it is still a woodwind instrument because of the reed. All right. attempt at uh, Pink Panther. So actually, now that I think about reeds, um, a box of 10 saxophone reeds uh, are about $25. Pretty expensive for a box of 10, but the box of 10 would last probably till January, from September to January. Um, clarinet reeds are a little cheaper. I think they're like $15. Um, so that's something that would be an extra cost from your rental or when you buy the instrument. Okay, so that's just something to remember. Those instruments, they have bigger instruments too. So if you liked the saxophone, but you want something a little bigger, uh, like you like the lower sounds, there is something called a tenor sax. So this is the alto sax size. Tenor sax would go to here, and then Barry sax is a lot bigger, okay? The larger the instrument, the lower the pitch. Alto and tenor are basically what we would start with in grade six. So those are single reeds. On to the ones that I don't, I'm not as bad at. This is the oboe. This is what I play in the band, in band. I started in grade six. Um, these instruments are double reeds because they have two sides to the reed. This is a bassoon reed. It's bigger, so I'm just trying to see if you can see it better. So here's the bassoon on the left and the oboe on the right. You can see there's two blades stacked over each other. So those are double reeds. That will be the oboe and the bassoon. So the oboe is a higher pitched melody instrument, just like the flute. And uh, kind of sounds like a snake charmer. what it sounds like. I forgot to say the double reed instruments are pretty funny because you can do something called crowing which is just playing. Um, so you again 
Sorry, I didn't think about this. I should have grabbed one, but you can use a straw and just blow through it. And it sometimes sounds like it. Um, but that was again called crowing. Probably sounded really weird to the computer, but you can play melodies. Um, generally, we don't do that in band class too much, but it's still pretty fun to do. This guy. Oh, sorry. One oboe reed is about 20 bucks. One reed. So that's something to think about. Um, reeds can be pretty expensive. Same as bassoon. I think I paid about 20 bucks for this. 20 to 25. Um, again, these reeds, uh, the bassoon one is a lot bigger, a lot fatter and a lot shorter. So here you can see the skinny long one is the oboe and the bassoon is the wider short one. So this is the bassoon. It is very long. I have to be careful not to break my light. <laughs> um, and it uses a lot of thumb action. And generally you would sit on a strap, but I'm trying to do this so you can all see it better. So, um, this is what I learned, uh, as you heard on the video just recently. <laughs> I would say if you uh, uh, need some extra support, sometimes teachers often say you should take lessons if you want to play a double reed instrument. Being that I can play them, you guys are fine. So if it's something you really, really want, that's, that's okay. Now I don't want a whole band full of oboes. I don't want a whole band full of saxophones. So this is where we hope that you can, um, we can choose and kind of go from there and try to balance the band. How long does the read last? I just spotted Mr. Giesbrecht um, posting it. So um, ideally, like their ideal time, I would say would be two weeks. They would sound the best, but I have personally used a read for two months. The read that I uh, was just using on oboe and bassoon are actually really old. Uh, if you take really good care of them, they can actually last. They just might not have the best tone, but they're perfect for practicing and stuff like that. I hope that was answering your question well. On to brass. So the brass instruments are instruments where you would buzz your lip. So uh, buzzing is when you would sound like a horse. <laughs> I'm inviting you to try. You're, do it. <laughs> Just try. <laughs> you all look funny like I do, so that's okay. <laughs> now, you can loosen it. And if you like a looser buzz, would be more like the tuba, the baritone, or the trombone, which I'll, tr I'll show you in a sec. Um, uh, another one would be the trumpet. So I grabbed some PVC pipe, um, but anything like this from home, if you could find something, you can explore to see how it feels. <laughs> and just try buzzing that way. It's good exercise to build the muscles. So um, for our brass instruments... I only have a trumpet and a trombone here, but so some of it I might be sharing some videos again to kind of show you samples. Moving on to the brass. So the brass instruments, you would buzz your lips like I talked about. And um, again, if you don't like the feeling of it, then this probably is not the instrument for you. These are not my main instruments, but here we go. <laughs> instruments generally they have these three little buttons and those are called valves and of course uh, once you plug the mouthpiece into it it just kind of gets magnified by the brass uh, of the instrument and through the bell cool beans so if I compare trumpet mouthpiece size this is a trombone mouthpiece it's also the same size as the baritone on my left is the trumpet mouthpiece, and on the right is the mouthpiece that works for trombone and baritone. Okay, now I'm going to show you a video after I've done the trombone, 
uh, just to kind of give you a little sample of some of the brass instruments that I don't have at home. But the special part about the trombone is this slide. And it is a looser buzz, like I mentioned before. I'm trying to do the Imperial March. Let me try it again. <laughs> more brass instruments that I didn't have at home and I wouldn't want to subject you to hearing me try. McLaughlin and this beautiful brass instrument is a French horn. As a brass player, I also buzz my lips into a mouthpiece. And the French horn uses the smallest mouthpiece in the brass family. Your school may use single horns which have three rotor valves and one row of tuning slides. The right hand goes into the bell of the horn and it normally stays in the same spot. But if you close it up into the bell, you can make the horn sound muted or stopped. <laughs> Jurassic Park. great melodies like this one. First class Lauren Curran and I play the euphonium. The euphonium might sound like a strange word but it means beautiful sound. The euphonium is a low brass instrument basically a smaller version of the tuba. It does indeed have a beautiful sound and can play gorgeous singing melodies as well as powerful brassy music. The euphonium also makes a great solo instrument because we use blazing fingers to play fast, virtuosic music. And that's the euphonium. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Scott Devereaux, and I play the tuba. The tuba is the biggest member of the brass family and also uses the biggest mouthpiece. When you put the mouthpiece and the tuba together, the instrument amplifies that sound into this sound. The tuba has a lot of tubing. Stretched out, the tuba would be as long as a school bus. The tuba's length gives it its low pitch, making it one of the lowest voices in the entire band. It establishes the foundation of sound and pitch for any ensemble. It's an extremely important job that helps make the rest of the band sound great. You may think that a tuba can't play fun melodies, but that's just not true. In the right hands, the tuba can play nearly anything. As a student, when my band parts weren't challenging enough, I would figure out fun melodies at home to play on my tuba. Often, they were from my favorite TV shows, movies, or video games. Here's an example you might recognize. Percussion instruments are anything that gets hit to make sound. They can get loud, so make sure your ears aren't too sensitive. I'm Staff Sergeant Andy Emmerich, and this is the snare drum. The snare drum is one of the primary non-pitched instruments of the percussion family. It's a type of membranophone, meaning you strike a membrane or a drum head to create the sound. 
The snare drum has two heads and a set of snares on the bottom. So here's the top head, and the bottom, and the snares run along the bottom head to create the characteristic sound. Although we don't play pitched notes on the snare drum like other instruments, we can use rolls, ornaments, and dynamics to create musical phrases. also called the glockenspiel, are an example from the pitch side of the percussion family. Plastic or metal-headed mallets are used to strike the steel bars. Here are two contrasting examples of what could be played on the bells. So I'm pausing it right now to point out the fact that each bar is actually planned out the exact same as a piano instrument, as the piano, pardon me. So for those of you who have done piano as a background, possibly you would play percussion and get to play bells as well as snare. I do usually suggest for grade sixes that band instruments, we would try a melody instrument for the first year to kind of get used to reading music and notes and all that. So that in grade seven, we would be able to actually easily pick this up and know how to read the notes um, if that's uh, something you wanted to do. So uh, don't be afraid though, if you have piano in your background to try the percussion instruments and set that as one of your top instruments. So this concludes the band video of May 2020. Um, so make sure that you do a few of the things that we talked about in the video. Um, number one is I will be sending you a band form and it will be asking for contact information so that if we have any questions or anything like that, I will have ways to reach you. Also, the most important part on this form is that you choose your top three of the instruments that I introduced to you in the video. Make sure that when you're choosing your top three instruments uh, that you're aware that we can't have a band, unfortunately, entirely of bassoons or saxophones. We want to have a balance. So having those backup ideas and I will contact you if it's not your number one instrument especially and uh, we can figure out a plan hopefully. Remember to do the little trick to see if you like uh, how to create the sounds, whether it is using the bottle to see if you could blow across it to play the flute, or buzzing our lips with something big and round uh, that is big, or something as small as the trumpet mouthpiece, just to kind of get that feeling. And so then you'll know how it would feel with your face. Also, you want to see if you can make any different sounds. So if you can hear the high and the low sounds, if it's harder with a smaller diameter, which means like the, the circle around, then it might maybe try a bigger one. And then you might be more successful with that. Um, and then, of course, the clarinet and the saxophone, it creates a sound with a thaw, teeth in your lips. Um, and then the double reads, I guess, would be exactly like saying the word mum and trying it that way. Um, there are tricks. You can use a straw to make a sound like the read of the oboe. You can Google that if you like. Anyways, so top three instruments, fill out the form and we will be in touch very, very soon. Um, if an instrument is chosen in September, or uh, whatever and you don't like it, I am going to be pretty flexible this year, uh, especially because of the fact that we don't get to actually try them. But if we work really, really hard, you would be able to play any instrument you really, really want to do. Um, but in January, we will kind of revisit and I'm definitely open for being flexible if, if you're really unhappy with it. If you need to reach me, I am available by email and you can email me any time of the day. I will respond 
Monday to Friday um, during normal school hours anyway. All right, I hope to see you soon and I'm excited for next year. Bye!